Good morning. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion from Monday morning, the first of two today, September 10th, 2018. Look at this satellite animation here, courtesy of TropicalTidbits.com. Today is the climatological peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. As you can see there, September the 10th, there it is. Uh, we talked about the ramping up would start at the end of August. Lo and behold, it did slowly, and then, boy, once we got into September, things really started to increase. We'll get to that in a moment there, that other tab. But here we are, peak of the hurricane season, Hurricane Florence, a tropical disturbance, probably going to become a depression, maybe even a storm, an impact somewhere over here. This is Isaac, destined to impact portions of the Lesser Antilles. And this is Helene, hopefully destined to impact no one. The uh, latest on Florence, we'll get to this in more detail, but there's an eye and a central dense overcast, a well-defined core starting to form, and it is nothing but open sailing, so to speak, from here for this to not only keep chugging west to west-northwest, but also to intensify quite a bit, going up to 150 miles per hour, perhaps, and it wouldn't surprise me if it was 10 to 15 miles per hour stronger than that, especially once it reaches the area right in here where ocean heat content really starts to increase and it's just going to go to town. And the swells that it's going to generate at that point are going to be absolutely remarkable um, just incredible and the amount of energy that they're going to bring to start pounding on the coast um, it's just we haven't seen anything like this in a long time along the southeast United States coast and those swells are going to be a big problem for people who do not know the power of the ocean so please be careful out there alright so let's take a look at the different uh, systems out there again starting from west to east here you know, we do have interests in Hawaii. After all, it's part of the United States. And most of the islands are under a tropical storm watch. And the expected impacts here from Olivia starting in another day or so. Heavy rain, especially in the upslope areas where the wind comes up and over those mountainous areas, the terrain. And it gets wrung out, that moisture. It's called orographic lifting. Uh, so those windward sides of the islands would have the, I guess, the biggest impacts until Olivia goes by, and then maybe some of that rain rotates around to the leeward side. We'll just have to wait and see. Hawaii is a very strange place in terms of how the islands interact with tropical cyclones, tropical storms, and hurricanes. So uh, it's really hard to, do, to predict exactly what's going to happen. But you folks there... Uh, be ready for the potential of heavy rain, flooding, landslides. You know, some of those streams, those beautiful waterfalls could become full and really overflow, etc., spilling onto highways. Uh, and I was there for Lane on Oahu here, and I can tell you it's a beautiful area, but when you get that much rainfall, it certainly is a problem. And looking at the satellite picture, uh, the good news is Olivia appears to be degrading still, and that's good. It's on the downturn, if you will, and hopefully that will continue, uh, and it will be just, quote-unquote, just a rain event. But, you know, that could be problematic in and of itself. Um, that tab keeps coming up. So now let's switch over to the Atlantic Basin. Nope, we got to try again. There we go. And I want to look at Isaac real quick because we're going to spend the rest of this on Florence. Isaac forecast to become a hurricane of course and it did I was trying to say it was forecast and it did and uh, it's going to keep moving generally west maybe slightly north of west through the lesser Antilles it won't be long before we see hurricane watches posted for this region uh, and here it's just a wait and see game honestly in terms of the structure of Isaac right now it's battling some dry air and that is inhibiting it from strengthening quickly which is obviously great news considering all of the mayhem that came out of this region last year, the so-called main development region. It's not ideal this year like it was last year, uh, especially areas west of about 50 degrees longitude here. Uh, this is the region that was so, so favorable last year. So we'll see what happens as this gets into that box that I just drew, just some magic box there. But you remember, Irma 
and Maria, especially Maria, really started taking off after they crossed 50, 55 west longitude. So we'll see what happens with Isaac. And going to the home page again of the Hurricane Center, uh, we won't even worry about Helene too much, but let's do take a look at this disturbance in the Caribbean Sea. 40% chance of development, and now in the text itself, it says, however, upper-level winds are forecast to become more conducive, and a tropical depression could form later this week when the system moves across the western Gulf of Mexico. And you never know, it could become a, a tropical storm as well. Uh, the modeling beginning to come around and pick up on it. And so you folks over here along the Texas coastline, maybe southwest Louisiana and northern Mexico, heavy rain at the very least headed your way, and you know all about the impacts from that. So, you know, if you're in Corpus Christi, Brownsville, Port Aransas, up to Houston, Galveston, Lake Charles and vicinity, keep an eye on this. You know, you are no strangers to the heavy rain. Uh, it's what rain has definitely been in the headlines a lot these past few years. Isn't that remarkable? Story for another day, perhaps, but it is absolutely incredible. Uh, all the flooding that we've had. Houston, you know, up there in Maryland with all that flooding we've seen in Ellicott City, I think it's called. Uh, North Carolina. Anyway, I'm on a tangent. Let's get back to the subject at hand. Of course, then we have Florence here. And the latest forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. I'm not going to go over the discussion this morning. I'll read the discussion this afternoon. And I do that to try to pick out things that are different or that maybe get my attention from a positive or a negative point of view. And so this afternoon on the uh, discussion that's written at 5 p.m. Eastern from the National Hurricane Center, I will go over it and uh, analyze it for you. We'll talk about it. But for now, I'm going to try to keep this more brief than yesterday. Yes, major hurricane uh, forecast to make landfall in North Carolina with wide-reaching impacts First, the swells are continuing and will continue to impact portions of the southeast coast as well as Bermuda. And as this draws closer, the impacts will just enhance. And we're going to look at that in more detail in a moment from a tweet from the National Weather Service in Wilmington. So this is the latest official forecast. Let's look at what Ben Knoll, he's a meteorologist and he's down in New Zealand, but he knows what he's talking about. I like this guy a lot with the graphics and just his straightforward nature. He puts it out there, and it's just, it is what it is. It's very objective. And in this case, the model of consistency here, the ECMWF, what I'm going to show you are the ensemble means, all the runs of the ECMWF, and then you have an average or the mean. And this shows you the past six runs of that ensemble mean and as it recycles here I'll step you through alright so there right there is one two three four five six the yellow being the latest look at how absolutely consistent that is on a landfall in either northeast South Carolina Horry County Brunswick County or New Hanover County North Carolina you know we're not seeing this waffling over here uh, maybe one back over here None of that. It is remarkably consistent, and that is good on the one hand because you can prepare people, hopefully. Bad on the other hand for obvious reasons that this is targeting the Carolinas. Somewhere along the state line, I guess you could average it out. Other models are showing other solutions, from Moorhead City to maybe Ocracoke Island or vicinity. Uh, and some are south, of course, towards Cherry Grove, South Carolina. It just depends. And when you average them out, I guess uh, the official forecast, again, pointing towards just north of Wilmington. Uh, who knows, right? We'll just wait and see. Still a few days out. So now he talks about, as he's putting it, the Florence, quote, super ensemble. 312 members of the model averaged over the last six model runs to simplify it you get a landfall down here and Wilmington of course is right here in southeast North Carolina and Charleston South Carolina down here roughly uh, just to give you a perspective alright so this is the average of 312 members over the past six model runs 
and they run every 12 hours so you figure that out um, that's pretty remarkable and so we'll see if this wavers any in the coming days we're still something like what 96 hours 90 hours before a potential landfall roughly and there's still room for some things to change all right so we have to talk impacts more and more from here on out worrying about the what's the model say what is the, you know <laughs> again most people are focusing on the center where's the center going to go and while the core and the center the eye are very important the hurricane is much larger than that you have to keep that in mind so I'm going to focus more and more on impacts and what you can expect and out of the National Weather Service here in Wilmington where I am uh, the headline is, is simple this is a potentially dangerous situation and if we look at the graphics here in their infographic uh, the hazards uh, the impacts the location and the timing you know this is all is it gonna let me that's just weird why did it do that uh, let me scroll down and get it back a Twitter malfunction <laughs> That's okay. We can fix it. I want to show you that one, too. Look at that. Uh, oh, I think that one's over here. Yep. Um, come on. Do, do, do. There it is. This is the one that I want. See, I was hoping for these little arrows, but I clicked on view image, and so I screwed it up. There we go. Back in action. So these give you the main points, and you can read that here. You know, Thursday into Friday is the time frame. The locations, obviously northeast South Carolina, southeast North Carolina, and some areas could have, uh, you know, the entire coastal region. You know, from uh, Myrtle Beach up through Atlantic Beach, Moorhead City, the Outer Banks, significant surge. And then we look at the sort of the graphical way to understand this with colors. We all like the color schemes of, you know, threat level, etc. And in this case three out of the five uh, impacts are extreme I don't remember seeing that too often you know Katrina comes to mind where they were pretty much all in the extreme category and you know the inland flooding is high uh, tornado threat will be moderate this could be a big problem especially for inland areas so we're gonna focus on this more and more and we'll get into specifics of who could receive what as Florence closes in the rainfall please do not ignore the rainfall potential in this scenario and this is going to change as Florence gets closer and exactly where it makes landfall but eastern North Carolina parts of southeast Virginia very high uh, amounts of rain in some cases exceeding a foot and the slower Florence moves the more rain will fall and that could be just a huge disaster on top of what we see at the coast this is another way to uh, visualize this 15 to 20 inches possible across eastern North Carolina ladies and gentlemen you've got to take this seriously we lose too many people you know more than more than zero is too many all right driving through floodwaters please don't do it uh, you don't know how deep it is you don't know if the road has been washed out and if you do it with your with your children with you uh, you know I believe that's a felony in my opinion and it's the same as leaving your children in a hot car unattended I mean it's it's absolutely unacceptable if you're gonna do it well shame on you if you're by yourself that's just not smart but if you're gonna take the helpless and innocent with you ie children uh, you should be you know locked up or something it's just horrible I hate to even have to talk about it but we lost 50 something people in floodwaters during Floyd and I don't remember the total during Matthew but it was significant and, and and the statistics of people driving through floodwaters is unacceptable it's 100 percent preventable nobody comes in and forces you at gunpoint to drive through floodwater it's a choice that people have made and sometimes it, it has cost them their lives and the lives of family members we saw it during Harvey and we're gonna see it again unfortunately uh, here for Florence and I'm gonna you know make that point a lot because we have to put an end to it so if you're a youngster and you're in the car with your mom and dad or whoever your guardian and they're heading towards you know flooding crossing the road I almost say you know beg them to stop the car and tell them you're gonna get out and stand on the side of the road 
whatever. Use your own your own phone and call for help. <laughs> I mean, we have to put an end to the stupidity. Honestly, we are not bigger than or greater than these forces of nature. And until we get that through our thick skulls, some of us, we're going to continue to have these tragedies. So come on, help me out here. Let's use some common sense. All right, so that's the latest rundown on everything uh, from the morning uh, after the 5 p.m. advisory and hopefully a few hours nap for me. Uh, We'll talk about it again, and I'll dissect the discussion. And then I'll give you a little bit of a glimpse uh, at my plans for coverage here locally. Don't forget, we do have an app. It's called Hurricane Impact on the App Store. We do not have an Android version currently available. I'm sorry. We just couldn't get it to happen without it being filled with problems. Hurricane Track on Twitter. And yes, I am on Patreon. A wonderful way to crowdfund the support for the work that I do and the colleagues that help me behind the scenes. Uh, It's wonderful. I appreciate the support that has come in. It really makes me feel very appreciated, and it's nice to be able to know that I can pay the bills when this is all said and done. So thank you very much. All right, that's it from me for now. I'm going to get a nap. I need it. Today is kind of a calm day, so to speak. My equipment is ready, getting ready, and nothing's happening out there just yet. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, I do appreciate it. I'll have more for you between 5 and 6 p.m. Eastern Time this afternoon.